Mr. President, yesterday the United States Supreme Court reaffirmed that no family should live one illness or one accident away from bankruptcy. The court's decision isn't a victory for Democrats or President Obama. It's a true victory for the American people. Let me give you a few reasons why that, in fact, is the case, and just a few. Since the act was signed by President Obama, more than six million young people have signed up for their parents' health plan. Since health reform took effect, five million seniors have already saved about $600 each on prescription drugs. The donut hole is being filled. Now, maybe people watching this presentation here today don't know what the donut hole is, but every senior citizen knows what it is because it costs them lots and lots of money. And because of this law now no longer being debatable as far as whether or not it's going to stand, it's the law of the country, millions have gotten free wellness checks and cancer screenings. They could never have done that before. Millions, Mr. President, free wellness checks and cancer screenings. That means millions of seniors have more money in their pockets for food, gas, and electric bill. Now, I don't know, Mr. President, if you have ever been around anyone with cystic fibrosis, but as I explained to them over there yesterday morning, uh, one of my son's coaches had a son who had cystic fibrosis. And, you know, they would have to beat on his chest, and he had a, this process to try to loosen the stuff that accumulated in your lung because of this disease. And kids used to live not very long with this. We're doing a lot better now. We have some medicines. But, Mr. President, in the future, anyone with cystic fibrosis will not be able to deny insurance because of this dread disease. Now, if you're under age 18, you cannot be denied insurance because you have this dread disease. Insurance companies can no longer raise your rates for no reason. And millions of Americans, Mr. President, are already seeing the benefit of this law. And soon, 35 million more who can't afford health insurance will have access to reasonably priced insurance and quality care. Here's how it works. Each state will set up its own health insurance marketplace called an exchange which will offer a menu of private insurance plans from which people can choose. Once these exchanges are in place, insurance companies will no longer be able to discriminate against any American with a pre-existing health condition, just like I've talked about. They won't be able to deny you insurance because you're sick. You won't be able to, they won't be able to charge you more just because you're a woman. And if you can't afford the premiums, you'll get a tax credit to help pay for them. <coughs> but what if you're one of the 250 million Americans who already has insurance? Nothing will change. Nothing. Nothing will change except you'll no longer have to worry that if you lose your job, you'll lose your insurance. You'll be able to keep your plan and keep your doctor. But now, you, not the insurance company, will be in control. And by August, almost 13 million people will get a rebate check from their insurance company because it spent too much on administrative costs and not enough on health care. The Affordable Care Act is already helping millions of Americans, seniors on Medicare, children with heart conditions, students with the dream, their dreams. And in coming months, many millions more will benefit from this law. That doesn't mean the law is perfect, Mr. President. We all know that. And we're willing to work uh, next year. And if there are any problems that we need to try to work out, we'll be happy to work with our colleagues to do that. But now that the Supreme Court has spoken, it's time to renew our focus on the most pressing challenge facing America today the high unemployment rate that we have.